This is the black experience for all. Hello, my name is Etra Kennedy, and today I'll be interviewing my grandfather, Joseph Calvin Kennedy Sr. for my genealogy project. Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. My first question, where and when were you born, and where did you live over the course of your childhood life? Uh, I was born in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, but when I was uh, two years old, or really a year old, my family moved to Franklin, Ohio, and I spent the entire, my entire life through high school uh, going in uh, Franklin, Franklin, Ohio. And when were you born? I was born in September 12th, 1926. Wow, you don't look that old. Thank you. <laughs> what was your childhood like and what was your family like? Well, I had, uh, there were six children, my mother, father, and three boys and three girls. And, uh, so we always had a wonderful time together, but my, my two brothers who were older, uh, sometimes one of my brothers would fight me and my <laughs> other brother would come to my rescue. Uh, so they were always fighting. One of them would fight me, one would come to my rescue, but then when they were in school, if anyone attacked one of them, the two of them were together as brothers. Wow. What major events were happening when you were young? Uh, the major events? Well, there were two things. One, of course, uh, it was a long time ago, but there was the, the Depression, and people were poor. Uh, many, many people, people who'd had a lot of money, lost all their money, there were no jobs, so people were very poor, and so there's Depression, and people in the town, this is a town of about 5,000 people, wow. and maybe half of the people, uh, once a week, would stand in line uh, to get free food, and they called it... Uh, they called it relief food because people didn't have any money for food. So that was one thing. Uh, the other thing I remember was um, when I called them the twins. The twins came from Detroit, and they were talking about the brown bomber, the black destroyer, the dark destroyer, Joe Lewis. And all of us started learning to box on the canal, along the canal that ran in front of the house. Hmm. Who were your best friends growing up? My best friends? Well, again, uh, you know, my brothers, my, my two brothers, but they were, they were a little older. So I had a little friend, he would come by every Saturday, every Saturday morning, I would still be asleep. And he would come by and he would whistle. <laughs> and that would wake me up and then I'd get up and then we'd go by another uh, fellow's house and we'd go to the woods. And there in the woods, we'd wade in the streams and we'd catch tadpoles. And as you know, tadpoles grow up and become frogs. So I had a little tub full of all dozens and dozens of tadpoles. Sounds exciting. Yes. What were some of your first jobs? Oh, my first job. I hate to tell you, my very first job, I had a little wagon. Mm -hmm. And this uh, lady and her family, they lived on this hill. And in the back of their, their house, they had some pigs. And my first job, there were two big garbage cans in this wagon. Mm -hmm. And I would go and pick up the garbage, go to people's houses and empty the garbage into these garbage cans. And when these two big cans were filled, I would take them up to, to the farm and they would what they call slop the hogs. So my first job was like a garbage, a garbage boy. <laughs> wow. And then I, then I had to uh, shine shoes. And then uh, I had a job working on the farm. And this, this job, one of my jobs was to go out and, and bring the cows in, uh, you know, about in the late afternoon, go out and bring the cows in. But there was a bull, and I was always afraid of this bull. And every once in a while, the bull would chise me, and I would run and jump behind the tree. So I hated going out to get those cows, but that was a part of my job. Wow. Were there any people while you were young that you have a fond memory of? Oh, well, yes, you know, again, my, my brothers and, and sisters and uh, a number of friends, not only the fellow who's come by, but uh, there was a uh, another fellow, uh, Ross, and 
I always remember Ross because his name, his name was, they, they call him Ulysses. And when he went to school, his teacher called him Ulysses. And she would read up, Ulysses, Ulysses, and he would never answer. And she would, Ulysses, that's you. And he said, no, my name is Ulysses. Uh, but later we went to New York together. So I, I remember him very well. What were your favorite hobbies? My favorite hobbies. And I don't know that I really, uh, I can't say that I really had a hobby. Just going out on, on those Saturdays and going into the woods, I guess that would be my, my hobby. <laughs> All right, well, what was your favorite subject in school? And when you got older, did it change? And who was your favorite teacher in school? Well, my favorite subject. I don't know. I always remember, uh, always remember the uh, Wizard of Oz. And every once or twice a week, the teacher would read, uh, read to us about the Wizard of Oz. And uh, one of the young girls uh, who sat next to me, her name was Dorothy. And I always said Dorothy. That was Dorothy <laughs> from the Wizard of Oz. So I liked her very much. So, but English and and reading was always uh, one of my favorites. And my favorite teacher uh, was my in high school English teacher, and she was very tough, but she was very good. And uh, she would read. We would read and uh, literature and poetry and Shakespeare. And it was there that I really got the. The feeling that, you know, with words and language, they could transport you to any place. What grade was your favorite? What, uh, well, I would have to say in maybe in, in, in high school. By the time I was probably, uh, I don't know, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, I would say these, those were the, the best. But I liked school. I liked school very, very much. And so every every grade was, was great. Oh, that's good to know. Did you have a role model growing up? A role model? Yeah. Uh, I would say not a, not an individual, not an individual, but again, my 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 family, uh, my family was was my model, my mother, my father, uh, and my brothers and sisters. They were like my role models, and uh, <clears throat> in in school, I always remember one time I I uh, I, I got a, a C. I got a C. And I came home and my mother and father got after me. And then every time I would go into a new grade, uh, if I got a C, they said, oh, you're not, you're not like yours, your sister. Because my sister was, got all A's all the way through from the first grade. She never got anything lower than an A. So wow. they were my models. And so I had to get A's and B's as well. What was your favorite food that you still like now? My favorite, one? my favorite food. That you still like now, yeah. Well, no, not a favorite food, but, but again, see, growing up, one of my greatest memories was on a Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday morning, my mother would get up and we would have sausage and fry and, and uh, fried apples and I always remember that. So I just have to say that was probably my favorite food. Oh, wow. Sounds delicious. Um, where did you go to junior high and where did you go to high school? Well, in, in Franklin, 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 uh, see again, this was a small town. So there were only, there were two, uh, there were two elementary schools and then there was a junior high. There was a combined junior high and high mm -hmm. school. I guess now you call it middle school. Mm -hmm. Uh, but so I, they were only, uh, so I went to two schools. In my 12 years, I went to two, two schools, one elementary school, and then the combined junior high school and high school. Oh, I see. Okay. When did you have your first girlfriend? My first girlfriend. I'll never forget her. I'll never forget her. I must have been about, oh, I must have been maybe in the eighth grade, or eighth grade, ninth grade, and uh, I took her to the movies. And remember, you were asking me about my job. So I was shining shoes and I'd make a little money. So I took her to the movie. And before we got in the movie, she wanted some popcorn and, and some candies. Mm -hmm. And so, fine. So we went into the movie and as soon as it was an intermission, she wanted some more popcorn and candy. And I said, I'll never take her out again. <laughs> <laughs> was she nice though? Oh, she was very, she was very nice. And, and sometimes she wrestled, she'd beat me up. 
Okay, well, when did you get married? Oh, I got married, uh, well, I finished college and uh, we were going to get married in the summer. Uh, but then I was uh, I was called into I was drafted into the army and that's when I went off to Korea, so we got married in uh, in the May of 1953. 1953. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're gonna take a short little intermission and we'll be right back for some more questions. Right. And it was great talking to you. Yeah. You, you, you have a, a very fascinating history. And Thank we'll you. be back. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Welcome back to our second segment of Eatra's genealogy interview. Here's our next question. When did you go to the Peace Corps and what influenced you to be a Peace Corps director? Well, I could talk about that for a long time, but I have to back up because, see, my mother and father uh, said there were six children and, and several times a week, my mother and father would gather the six children, gather us around and read to us some stories about about Africa, about the great kingdoms of Africa and Egypt and and so on. And so growing up, I had this dream that one day I would go to Africa. And after I finished college, I'd gotten a PhD and I got a grant uh, that took me to Africa. And this grant, I went into villages, hundreds of villages in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Liberia. And going into those into those villages, meeting the people, seeing the way they lived, I said, "Oh, this this is for me." And so when I came when I came back and it started Peace Corps, I knew that I had to go into Peace Corps. That's what I wanted to do. And so I went to Peace Corps, and I was a Peace Corps director in Sierra Leone, and then I was the director for all of East Asia, the Pacific region, like Malaysia and Thailand and Philippines and all those countries. But it was just so, so being involved with the people and in the villages and in their, in their lives and the music and the dance. And so it was just beautiful. Do you remember what year that was? <clears throat> uh, well, Sorry. I first went, I first went to Peace Corps in, uh, I got a research grant in 1960 and then I first went to Peace Corps in 1965 and left Peace Corps in 1971. Okay. Uh, when and what influenced you to start Africare? Well, again, coming out of the my research experience, coming out of the Peace Corps experience, I said when I left Peace Corps, I said this was the finest job I could ever have. Where could I get a job like this? And my friend and I said, you can never get a job like that. So you have to create your own organization. So we created this organization so we could do have that kind of work and do that kind of job. And with Africare, it's nonprofit. People say, oh, you mean you didn't make money? Well, yeah, we all got paid. Uh, but not a lot. Um, but uh, we started as a small organization, no money, and today we have a budget of $35 million a year, and we're in 28 countries across the continent of Africa, and, and it's, it's, it's been beautiful. It, that's amazing. When did, your, when did your parents and grand, when were your parents and grandparents born, and when did they die? Okay, <clears throat> well, my, my uh, grandparents, no, so I never knew my uh, my grandparents, but oh, okay. uh, my grandfather uh, was known as Black Jim Kennedy, who came from Ireland, and he was an indentured servant. So he was not a, he was not a slave. He came, and I think he was a cabinet maker, uh, and he came from Ireland, and I guess from New York and New Orleans, and ended up uh, in in um, Tennessee, and so that see we don't have exact records, but that would have been he had to have been born in. I don't know, in 1830 or something like that. And my grandmother, a picture of her, uh, she was, uh, she was a uh, full-blooded Cherokee uh, Indian. Uh, and that's on my father's side. On my mother's side, uh, my mother's uh, great uh, parent, grandparents uh, were slaves on the plantation in Virginia, a place called Abington, Virginia. And, um, my mother would talk about going to the slave plantation and then moving to uh, to uh, Tennessee. And then uh, my mother, my father died. He died young. He died at age 60. My mother died at age 92. When did you get out of college? I, I graduated from 
my first two years of college, I went to Howard in, in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I went there for two years. And then I went to Ohio oh, State, and then I finished there in like 1948 or something. And then I went to, then I got a, bas a master's degree. And in 1958, I got a Ph.D. in psychology from Columbia University. Okay. What was your favorite sport growing up? Or sports? Well, okay. I, I, I told you the, the, one of the great memories was people, these, the twins, always call them twins, coming from Detroit. And so my first favorite sport was boxing. And so we all boxed. And both of my brothers went to Golden Gloves, and then they fought professionally. And so I boxed. I boxed, and that was that was my favorite sport. And then, uh, then all of the sports, uh, especially basketball and football. Who was president when you were born? When I was, you know, when when I was born, when I was growing up, and, and during the Depression years, it was Franklin Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. What was or is your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday. The joy that you have very fond memories of. Well, I would. I was going to say Christmas, but I think it would be Thanksgiving, and I'll tell you why. Because, see, well, I'll tell you, we were poor, and we didn't have much money, and we didn't have much food, but Thanksgiving, we managed to have all kinds of food, turkeys and cranberries, so much food, and what we would do, we would eat. Now, again, six children, my mother, eight of us, would gather around and eat, and I would just stuff myself, and then I would get up and walk around the block, walk for 15, 20 minutes, half hour, come back, and eat some more, and stuff myself again. <laughs> so that was one of my favorite holidays. Well, it sounds fun, I tell you that. What was your favorite music group growing up? Mm. Well, groups, I'm, I'm sure you you probably never even heard of them. Groups like, uh, there was Duke Ellington, and uh, the Ink Spots, and the Mills Brothers, and uh, Ella Fitzgerald, and and uh, so just the different, different uh, singers and groups uh but see in those days you know the, 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 there was no television yeah huh? and so the, the radio and so you didn't listen to the radio all the time yeah so i didn't hear these groups all the time but those those were my my favorite groups you did have records though didn't you well we had records but again records cost money and it didn't have much money to buy records that so you sense. generally listen to them on the radio you said that your that your brothers and sisters do well in school, but were you did you did you do very well in school? Well, uh, yes, I didn't have any choice. I said my my uh, brothers and sisters they all did extremely well, and uh, I I followed my my sister, uh, my older sister, and she was about three years ahead of me. Uh, but I told you she was uh, got all A's and those. Uh, times you didn't get A's and B's, you got uh, grades. So she always got 199 all the way through school. So any time I entered a class, uh, the teachers would say, "Oh, you 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 have to do better than that. You have to be you. you are you sure you? Is it Lillian is your is your sister? She was so bright, and so I had to do well. So yes, all those did very well. We're all in the honor roll. All your footsteps. <laughs> yes." Where were there any times in your life that were horrific and bad memories that stand out to you? No, I don't. You know, that's a, that's a very interesting question because I don't, I don't. You mean growing up? Yeah, like if something sad happened to you, it well, was hard for you. Well, no, but I I uh, remember I was in college uh, when my oldest brother. Uh, you know, he was a prize fighter, and he was going to, uh, he was training to go work with Joe Lewis in his, in his championship fight against Jersey Joe Walcott, and uh, he died of a heart attack while he was out training. So that's probably one of the worst, one of the worst memories. That sounds terrible. What was your favorite book growing up? My favorite book? Uh... You know, I don't, I don't remember, I don't even remember the names of the books, but I remember there's a writer whose name was Howard Pease, and he always wrote about uh, these pirates, and pirate ships, and uh, these ships were always going, they were pirates, and uh, they were always going to Martinique, 
And so I always wanted to go to Martinique. I've never been to Martinique, but it was all these stories about being at sea and the little cabin boy working on these ships and going to these ports. Uh, so I don't even remember the name of the, of the books, but I remember the author, Howard Pease. So you liked his books? Yes. What was or is your favorite kind of car? Well, I would say, let's always remember this. It was a, my brother, my two brothers and a friend, they came, they came home to Franklin one time. They'd been in college uh, and I was still in, in high school. We were still in high school. And they came and they came in a brand new red Chevrolet. And that was my favorite car because in this little town, I told you, see, people were poor. So n nobody, I think the mayor and the president of the bank had new cars. Nobody else had a new car. So they arrived in this brand new shiny red Chevrolet. So that was my favorite car. Did you have a favorite animal growing up? Uh, I'm sorry you asked that. Because I had a, now I know it's in your family you have a cat. Well, see, I had a, the, uh, one of my classmates, uh, she, uh, when, when her cat would have kittens, uh, she would come to school and give, give a student, a, you know, one of her, her classmates a kitten. And so you had to almost get on a waiting list to get a kitten. And so I got this kitten and this was my pet. And I took care of this cat to this kitten and he slept under the stairs and out in the back porch and one day i came out and the cat had run away i've never liked cats since then well, that's terrible. <laughs> i know i took care of that cat and then he ran away wow, wow. <laughs> did you ever learn how to cook oh yes i'd make chili <laughs> 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 I make chili and I can I make the uh, on on Thanksgiving and I bake the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I make hamburgers. I know how you feel. <laughs> uh, was there anyone in your family who pushed you to do better and work harder than why? I mean, you've almost don't kind of answered that question. Well, no. Again, it was just a part of the family. And again, they said, look, you know, if you really are going to make it in the society. You have to have a good education. In those days, see, in those days, you didn't have people of color who were in sports like basketball and baseball and so on. And so if you were going to get ahead in the society, yeah. you had to have a good education. Education was the key to making it in the American society. Would people consider you as a person who smiles and laughs? Or would, you, would people consider you very serious or a person who is very in between? I would say laughing and serious at the same time. How's that? When you were in school, were you considered popular or unpopular? Well, in, uh, you know, when I was in high school, uh, and I played uh, football. I was football, the quarterback and the captain. I was on the basketball team. We won the uh, regional championships. And I was the first athlete in the history of, of the school to get four letters in one year. So what school was that? Franklin, that Franklin. Right. And but in basketball, in football, basketball, baseball, and track. So it has never happened before. As a matter of fact, it's, it's never happened since. And so uh, every year, you know, when you do the yearbook, uh, I was voted the most popular boy and the way most likely to succeed. Well, that must feel nice. All right. Did you have any pets growing up? You did, did, did any other than that cat? Or no, was that the no, only? no. Oh, yeah, they had a dog. You had a dog? I had a dog. Yeah. And I ended up hating the dog, too, <laughs> <laughs> because the dog, this was a, uh, a German shepherd. Mm, oh. No, no. What did they used to call those? Uh, police dogs? What did they call them? Uh, I'm not sure. And and the neighbor next door had a bulldog. Oh wow! And this bulldog always beat our little dog up, and so I hated that dog. I thought the dog was a coward. <laughs> All right. Well, what is or was your best memories that you still remember now? 
well, again, just growing, growing up, it, it was a small town. It was a small town, but uh, the family uh, gathering around this large dining room table, and we would all eat, eat dinner together. And uh, then we would sit there after dinner, maybe the six of us, the children were sitting there studying. And that was that was it. See, there wasn't that much to do. I say there wasn't television, and you didn't have the radio on all the time. So we would sit there and study and exchange ideas, and that was always has always been a great memory. Did you ever try smoking? Uh, as a matter of fact, I did. Not surprised. Most people try it. No, I I, I tried it, but uh, uh, I tried it, and then uh, one day uh, I was in New York, and it was like a blizzard. And I and I'd run, I'd run out of cigarettes, and I couldn't get out of the house for about three days. So for three days, I didn't have a cigarette. And when the snow stopped, I started to go out. And I said, I'll go out and buy some cigarettes. And then I said, wait, wait, for three days, you haven't had a cigarette, and that didn't bother you. So right then and there, I never smoked again. Hey, that blizzard saved your life. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the best person to talk to when you were growing up as a child? Well, I would say again, my mother, my my mother and father, uh, and especially especially my mother because she was there. My father, he was a barber, and uh, you know he didn't get home until late in the in the evening. Uh, so I would say uh, uh, my mother. But let me add one other thing about, about memories because see on sat on Saturday when the barber shop would close on Saturday, uh, across the street from the barber shop was a grocery store, fruit store. And so my father, again, we were poor, but the, the owner of the store, uh, there were, you know, bananas and apples, and this was Saturday evening. So they were going to spoil. So he would give my father these, these apples and oranges and bananas. And so on Saturdays, when he came home, we would have a feast. Mm, that sounds good. You might have, you might have already gone over this question, but what would your family meals be like? Uh, well, again, we have, every once in a while, we'd have, uh, some pork chops and we'd have chicken. We had a lot of, we had a lot of chicken because as a matter of fact, we had a, we had a chicken house, a hen house in the back of the yard. And, uh, we had a couple of hens and roosters and the rooster would wake us up and we'd go out and get the eggs. And so, but then it was always sad because we fed these chickens and then you have to go out and take the chicken and wring its neck and then eat it. <laughs> that was always sort of sad. If you could have another child, would you and why? Uh, if I could have another child and it was as, as, as fine as, as my grandson, I would, yes. All right, well, I had a really good time um, asking you these questions and I hope you had a good time answering them. And I, I, I sure learned a lot, and it was really fun working with you, and I had a good time doing this. Well, thank so you so much. Thank you, and I enjoyed it very much.